Call this meeting to order. Uh, do we have any citizens comments? No. All right. All right. Uh, here a motion to adopt the agenda. I would like to uh, make a motion that we adopt the Roman numerals three, four, and five. I have a motion by Mr. Moore. I have a second. second. Second by Mr. Moore. I'll vote in favor. Motion carries. All right. First up, uh, City Park Stadium Improvements. Uh, Mr. Niles. Good evening. Good evening. So we have a report for you this evening on the work going on over at City Park, the stadium improvements. Again, the improvements is uh, new storage building, uh, new bleachers, a uh, new press box, total of 16,000 square feet. Um, the photos uh, so shows what it will be at completion. So just, uh, yeah, just to give you an idea, this building down here at the bottom is the Storage building. Storage building you're talking about replacing the old one that we uh, share with uh, Gainesville Park and Rec. And then all of these bleachers are new. Right. And then of course, all of this is new. They'll um, continue to be shared. Yes. So we actually have a section for them that has their own entrance. And then there's a wall and a section for us. Correct. For us. Okay, the next one just shows uh, some of the site work, concrete work and masonry that uh, already occurred. Uh, soldier, soldier pile wall. Uh, if you read by, there's that uh, concrete wall that's already done. That had to be done to stabilize the bank. So now footings have already begun uh, for the press box itself and for the new bleachers. Uh, they're doing masonry work and continue to do site work there at the site. So the way the soldier pile wall works is they, they had to drill holes about 20 feet deep, mm -hmm. and then they drove the beams down into it, and then you saw the wood being fixed to it, and then they back forth with concrete. And, right. And it's still Okay, next one. Okay, again, so the, this is work for the next two weeks. Again, to uh, <coughs> finish doing the uh, footings, uh, get more con for the concrete slabs of the main uh, maintenance building, and then also uh, go ahead and start some of the uh, prefab work. Steel supposed to go up this week? They're starting steel. Mm -hmm. And then there's about three photos that actually just show. Uh, the site work prep, what, what he's looking at. Now, that's that soldier pile wall there. So basically, the new um, concession <clears throat> stands, restroom, and all of that, and it will have the press box above it, to come off about 10 feet from this wall will be the base of it coming over. You'll also notice that how this steps down from this upper section to a lower section. Uh, so there'll be a ramp there as well as steps kind of divide the two areas versus what we had before, which was just a pretty continuous slope. Then here to the extreme right, where that's a new bleacher section <laughs> there. Again, just another site shot at from different location that just shows the uh, ongoing work there. Underground attention pond, it's completely done. Uh, still a little bit of grading to be done, but overall, uh, you start to see some things go vertical soon. Again, a little bit better view of the uh, soldier power wall. And again, so you can see where the upper uh, bleachers that are there now, how the uh, new press box and everything will fit right up to that. And with this new arrangement, there will not be a gate up top where there used to be, right? Everybody will enter down below. Everyone will enter here. We will have to have a gate here for egress. Correct. Uh, and, and for fire, fire service. service. Right. But um, it won't be. It will not be. On the gate for game. No. And that was something that was not originally planned, but uh, fire department got all of the plans. That was the feedback they gave in order to, to sign off. Uh, the good news is the light poles are staying. Is that right, Mr. Niles? Correct. So we're not having to move that. So that at least saves a little bit of time. Um, 
you'll notice this area here, uh, the way you'll approach it, if you remember from the, when you walk in the take a boost now, you would go down a little bit of embankment. That is all going to be level. It's going to be straight out. And so you're going to step up to the back side, the upper part of these bleachers, and then come down them to go back up. More of an open view shot there. This encompasses the entire side. This is uh, what we're referring to as the concierge level. And again, it just shows uh, restrooms on each side and then concessions in the middle. And again, that back walkway uh, where you would come into concessions. So this right here is that soldier pile wall that you saw. And then here's the access to uh, everything else. So you have men's restrooms on the left, women's restrooms on the right. Uh, we know that the restrooms we had there had what maybe five stalls a piece, Mr. Myers. Uh, so now uh, See, having to get that up the code uh, means we have a whole lot more restrooms than we would ever imagine we would need. But that's what's here on the men's and women's side. We have four roll-up doors uh, for concessions as well as the ones there on the PK Dixon field house, concession storage, and then general storage behind. Uh, we do have access to this backside through what will be two gates. Uh, that will be this will be manned in order to access the elevator or the stairs. Um, and you can see the access around back. Mm -hmm. Any questions about this lower level? And that lower level is 6,800 square feet. Uh, the next level is that what we call the suite level. Um, it's got uh, five different suites, uh, one large suite in the middle, hospitality suite, and then two on each side. You'll see on either side, you've got an outside uh, deck or terrace area as well. Uh, this floor is 4,800 square feet. And again, you would in, enter in uh, to either stairways or to your, uh, to your left where the elevator is, and you see a common hallway in the middle. There likely won't be many people going up the stairs, uh, but there'll be a good number going down. Uh, the highest point from ground level is what, 75 feet, Mr. Nas? Sure. Pretty nice trick. And then this is top level. Uh, this is coaches, media. Uh, this is 4,800 square feet as well. And again, elevator stairs on either side. Uh, men's and women restrooms, and again, a common hallway in the middle. So, you know, all press boxes usually have a, a spot for the coaches, uh, home side, away side. Uh, we do have access to the top for uh, any video that needs to happen. But one thing that's always tied, at least has been tied uh, in our press boxes, there's not a lot of room for media and the scoring just to kind of spread out a little bit. So we do have an away team. Uh, that is on the left side, the home team is on the right side. You have two media areas, and then you have a large scoring area, which is where your officials go uh, and, and others that are designated for that area. More Mr. space is needed. Can you shrink the away side down? <laughs> we'll put them up top. <laughs> yeah. Then this last photo is just a conceptual of uh, what one of the booths, uh, one of the suites could look like, as well as restrooms. Any questions? Any questions, Mr. Niles? Thank you, Mr. Niles. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Lindsay, can you give us an update on our soon to be inductees into the uh, Gainesville Athletics Hall of Fame? Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Welcome, Mr. Young and Mr. Pettis. Uh, it's my pleasure to uh, introduce to you guys the uh, 24 class to the Hall of Fame. That's going to be A.J. Johnson, Lauren Niles, Victor Minical, David Martin, Derward Pennington, and the 21-22 uh, back-to-back baseball state championship teams. Those will be honored at the banquet uh, on April 13th. Uh, just a little bit about our inductees. Uh, Mr. David Martin uh, was a 1966 graduate of Gainesville High School, where he was a standout running back for Big Red. He held the rushing record at GHS for more than 30 years. 
AJ, uh, AJ Alexander Johnson was a three sport athlete at Gainesville. Uh, he made his Hall of Fame marks as a four year starter for the Red Elephant football team before graduating in 2011 and becoming a freshman All American and All SEC performer at the University of Tennessee. The four star inside linebacker helped get, uh, lead Gainesville to the 2009 state championship game while earning All State and All American status. Lauren Niles earned five state championships as a two sport athlete at Gainesville. Niles, who graduated in 2004, helped Gainesville women's basketball win three state titles in four years. And as a discus thrower for GHS, Niles won uh, state championships in 2003 and 2004. Victor Menical was a four-year uh, starter at shortstop for Gainesville baseball, helping the Red Elephants win an unprecedented three state championships from 96 to 98. The 1998 uh, Class 2A Player of the Year uh, and GHS graduate was named second team All-American by the USA Today and Baseball America before being drafted in the sixth round by the Atlanta Braves. Menacal chose college over the pros and started for four years at Georgia Tech, leading the Yellow Jackets to the 2002 College World Series, where he was named shortstop for the All-College World Series team. Durward Pennington came to Gainesville High School in 1965. Uh, Mr. Pennington, known to the Red Elephant Faithful as Coach P, served as teacher and assistant coach before leaving education in 1973 for the private sector. Despite the move and career, Pennington's love and support of GHS athletics and student athletes uh, remained in uh, a fashion until his death in 2013. Lastly, as I mentioned before, is the 2001 and 2002 state back-to-back uh, -back state championship uh, baseball teams who left an incredible mark, amassing a 64-4 record over those two years while scoring opponents uh, in the 2002 playoffs, 105 to 16. That will be our 2024 Hall of Fame class. And the date on? April 13th at the Civic Center. Any questions, Mr. Lindsay? Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, Mrs. Jones, I'm, I'm you got to do that. So come up here and speak. <laughs> Personnel tonight. Not show any mercy tonight. <laughs> Good afternoon. Um, the Human Resources Department will begin the process of renewing employee contracts for the 2024-2025 school year. A timeline has been established for contract renewals for our certified employees. Decision guides will be sent to the principals on February the 19th. The guides will include a list of all of our certified employees. Principals will complete the guide by noting which employees will be returning or not returning for next school year. And the deadline for completion is February the 26th. A contract renewal list will be presented to the board for approval on March 4th. After the board approves the renewal, Contracts will be emailed to certified employees on March the 18th, and they will have 10 business days after contracts are issued to submit their contracts by the March 30th deadline. And also beginning this year, the deadline for certified employees to submit their request to be released from their signed 2024-2025 contracts is June 1st. In previous years, the deadline was June 15th. However, this year, the Georgia Professional Standards Commission has changed the deadline to June 1st. So, so one thing that we started doing the last few years is our goal is to have all of those contracts back to us before spring break. Um, right now, we did a letter of intent um, back at the 1st of January that lets us know who's already retired and resigning. But once you send out a contract, you really know for sure who's been looking. And so uh, we'll know then before spring break which positions we may have available that right now we do not know are available. Any questions of Mr. Jones? Mr. Williams? Thank you. Any discussion letters? Uh, I hear a motion to adjourn, in, to adjourn into executive session. Second. Motion by Dr. Randy. Second. The second time, Mr. Young, I will be later. Thank you all for coming. Thank you.